this video, I'm going to be talking about what is a latch inside of an FPGA, describe to you what a latch is, and then I'm going to tell you why you should never use them. So let's get started. Latches, seriously, don't even bother using them. Uh, I'll tell you why, but let's first talk about what is a latch. Uh, a latch is used to store state information. So state means keeping its current value for the future. So if you want something to keep a zero to a zero in the future, you want you might want to use, well, you could use a latch, you don't want to. Uh, a, it's a non-clock circuit, meaning it does not use a clock. Again, a clock is transitions from zero to one uh, that could go on continuously. They kind of keep the FPGA chugging along. And um, uh, latches have two inputs. Usually uh, the SR latch is one of the more common latches you might see in like an intro to engineering class or intro to digital logic class. Uh, there's D latches, JK latches, Earl latches, and if you really care about how they all work, I suggest going to Wikipedia and looking at their truth tables uh, because they're not, I'm not going to even use them, so why would you care about how the details work? I um, mean, you know, a lot of professors spend time on this, and I'm not really sure why. I think it's historically interesting, but you know, for present day FPGA design, meaningless, uh, almost useless. And uh, more people get in trouble by accidentally creating latches than creating them on purpose, than ever needing to create one. So why do, why do I hate nat latches so much, Mr. Nanland guy? First of all, my name is Russell. And secondly, the person who created the latch often did so unintentionally. Usually the tools will tell you, hey, you created a latch. Are you sure you meant to do that? Because 99.9% .9 of the time, the answer is no, you didn't mean to do it. Um, I've been an FPGA designer for 10 years and I have never on purpose created a latch. I've never found a need for it. So I will just go ahead and say, don't use them ever. It's not important. Um, they so that's rule number reason number one you often just don't even mean to do it and it happens by accident and what I'm going to talk about towards the second half of this video is how to avoid creating them in VHDL and Verilog so I'll go through a couple of examples where you might get tripped up and the second reason is that they can be difficult for the FPGA tools to create properly they add routing delays and they can cause your design to fail to meet timing when you build your FPGA and run through place and route uh, it's oftentimes you'll find that uh, latch will confuse the tools and uh, they won't properly close timing. So now that you understand why I hate them a little bit, let's talk about how they're created and how to therefore avoid using them ever. This first example is a VHDL example showing latch creation via an incomplete assignment in a combinational process, which is a mouthful, but I'm going to break it down. Let's start with combinational process. Uh, processes in VHDL can be combinational or sequential. Combinational means it does not use a clock. Sequential means it uses a clock. You can never create a latch using a sequential process. If you ever have a clocked process, there's no way that that clocked process is going to generate a latch because latches are non-clocked pieces of logic. So the only way you can get a latch via a process is using a non-clocked process, which is a combinational process, which is one that I was showing one right here. This is a combinational process. Uh, incomplete assignment. The only way to avoid creating a latch is to make sure that every single possible outcome is, uh, is stated clearly in the code. So if you have an incomplete assignment, that means that one of the possible outcomes is not, is not taken care of. Uh, in this code specifically, what happens if I enable is equal to zero? I haven't said anything about what happens when I enable equals is equal to zero. So what happens, what the tool infers is that OLATCH should only change its output when I enable is equal to one. When I enable is equal to zero, the tools will say, I guess OLATCH needs to keep its current value, it needs to keep state. And again, state is what generates a latch. So uh, the tools will put a latch in here. Uh, the way to avoid doing this is to make sure that all of your assignments in your combinational processes, again, this is a combinational process because there's no clock, are complete. And the way to make it complete would just be to add an else statement here. Else I enable, oh, I'm sorry, else olatch gets zero, yeah, something like that. So now we have specified when the enable is equal to one and when the enable is not equal to one. So all the possible outcomes are taken care of. There's another way that we can get a latch in VHDL, and that is with an incomplete assignment in a conditional assignment. 
Conditional assignments are not in a process, outside of a process, using usually using a when else scenario. Um, that you can also use select to get conditional assignments, but this one is uh, using the when and else. So here we have olatch, which is a four bit standard logic vector output and a two bit input selector. And we've specified only three of the four possible combinations of that input, of that two bit input. We've specified when it's equal to zero, 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 one, one, zero, but what happens when an I select is equal to one, one, the tools don't know, and they're going to assume that olatch keeps its current state, and again, state is a latch. So the way to fix it is to add one last else statement, which I do down here. So the last else statement will cover this, all the other situations. Always add one last else statement to cover any other situations. It's like a default in the case statement. You should always c cover all your cases, all your situations, because you want to avoid latches, because they're evil. For Verilog, um, Here's one example of, uh, very similar to the VHDL example, incomplete assignment in a combinational always block. A combinational always block is an always block that is non-clocked, so it's not driven by a clock. Uh, it's only driven by uh, this two bit I select here. And it's very similar. We've only specified the situation where I select is equal to zero, 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 one, one, zero, we are missing the situation where I select is equal to one, one. The tools don't know what to do, so they're going to maintain olatch's current state, which is gonna generate the latch. The way to fix this, again, is else olatch gets for tick B zero, 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 zero. Make sure that all of your conditions uh, are taken care of. Now, when you are running through your synthesis and place and route, the tools will usually tell you that you've generated a latch, and they'll tell you that you have an incomplete assignment. Big warning pops up and tells you, you've probably done something wrong. Uh, so again, latches are evil, uh, so try to keep them under control. That's the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to play with the code and really run some, some real experiments and do some real projects, please buy a nanland.com Go board. They're up for sale and uh, your support keeps these videos coming and you'll get to play with an awesome board with a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of tutorials. Um, so I really appreciate your support. Uh, you can buy one today. Thanks.